Praise the Lord, everybody. Sister Toya, come on in to the sanctuary. Sister Teresa, God bless you. So good to see you all tonight. I am uh, excited and um, probably a little nervous and all that good stuff all at the same time. So good to see you. Please tell your family I said hello. Minister Die, Reverend Johnson. It's church time. <laughs> hey, Sister Teresa, so good to see you. AP. Uh, so good to see you. I'm in here managing a whole lot. Welcome to church, Minister Darlene. Come on. Evangelist Padron, so good to see you, sir. So good to come. I got the praise and worship team singing on the, <laughs> on the computer. Please make sure you hit the share button. First church, I'm trying to. Uh... Is that my sister, Joss? Hi, Joss. All the way from Columbus. Love you so, so much. So good to see you tonight. Hey, First Lady. I miss you, girl. Welcome uh, to uh, service tonight. It is um, so good to be here. I am um, here. Minister Myrna, so good to see you. Sister Andrea, God bless you. And um, it's so good to have you all on. Bro, Mike, Sister Donna, love you. So good to see you. Love you, Josh. Sister Linda, God bless you. Welcome tonight. Praise the Lord, saints. Uh, it is Word Wednesday, and uh, we are so uh, thankful to be here tonight. Sister Audrey, uh, Minister Pat, Sister Andrine, the Waldrons. Shout out to the Waldrons uh, who have been a great help. Sister Muriel, bro, Mark. Sister Alma, God bless you, and Sister Brenda, so many of you all coming on tonight, and uh, God bless you, Sister Kim, I see is on. Welcome to the First Church of God Christian Life Center Word Wednesday service. T.T. Gage is in the house, and um, we are so, so thankful for that. Deacon uh, Linda is on, uh, the leader of our diaconate ministry, so thankful for her and all the work that the saints are doing. I see Deacon Trudy, Pastor Debbie, love you so much. Associate Pastor here, Sister Lanita, Minister Diane, Sister Angela. Welcome, I'm your greeter tonight. I'm your usher. I'm your praise and worship leader. Uh, Sister Adriana, so good to see you. Uh, Sister Belita is on, love to you and Brother James. And I wanted to welcome you all tonight to uh, <clears throat> the First Church of God Christian Life Center. I, we are calling this our virtual sanctuary. Uh, as you all know, our country, excuse me, our community, our country, and our world is in the midst of uh, dealing with much challenge um, as it pertains to COVID-19, the coronavirus, uh, which has altered so much of our lives. Uh, but one thing I want you to know is that um, it has not changed who God is. It has not changed what God is doing. I am encouraged, and I'm not just uh, giving you all any um, fake encouragement. I am encouraged because I know that uh, Jesus Christ is still on the throne. He is reigning, and his reign will never end. That uh, where we find ourselves uh, currently uh, did not catch him by surprise. So good to see all the saints, Deacon Michelle and Sister Beryl, Sister Luciana, my man Remy, Sister Kendra, God bless you. None of this has caught our God by surprise. Sister Cheryl, oh, and um, I want to convey a message uh, to the saints that in, in spite of all uh, that is um, going on, in spite of all the things that we are dealing with and that we are facing, 
we are yet confident that uh, the God of our salvation is reigning and reigning supreme. First Church, would you hit that share button? Make sure that any saints that you know who may not be in service tonight, uh, that they would absolutely join us. Here's what I want to do tonight. In just a couple minutes, uh, I am going to be going into our lesson. I am uh, really uh, excited to, to share um, this lesson tonight. And immediately following the lesson, I'll close with prayer. I want to address uh, our church uh, and kind of give uh, some, some instruction and some encouragement about what the next couple of weeks uh, will look like. And then I'm going to take some questions. And uh, if you uh, are here and a part of our church, and, and if, you, if you're on here visiting tonight, I see we got some visitors. So good to see my sister, the most Reverend Libby Lee. Uh, love you, sister. Uh, sister Lee, is so good to have you here. Uh, again, make sure that you're sending text messages and sharing this post so that uh, those in our church can know we're here. So we're going to have our lesson, Bible study. And then we are going to have, uh, I'm going to address uh, some things specifically pertaining uh, to, uh, to COVID-19 and how it is affecting us and some changes that we'll be making temporarily. And then lastly, I'm going to take some questions from anybody who may have some, and then we're going to go home. Amen. Let's pray. Hey, Sister Carolyn, Father, we are so thankful, so appreciative to be your children. Your word tells us that you have given us the power to be called the sons of the living God, the children of God. You have given us that power and we are thankful. And with that power, with that privilege comes security and safety in knowing, Lord, and knowing that you have us covered, that you are doing what you do. Even when it doesn't feel like it, even when it doesn't appear to be, we remain confident that our God is doing what he has always done. And that is taking care of his children. So, Lord, whether this lasts another day or another 100, we will look to the hills from which cometh our help because our help comes from the Lord. And so, Lord, we ask you to continue to help us. Bless all who are on tonight. We believe that in this you are pleased, an assembling of the saints. And we ask that this would tonight be our sanctuary and that your presence will be felt and that you will be glorified in all that is done both now and forever. In Jesus' name, five people type amen, amen, amen. <clears throat> now, my church, no, I like to sing. I didn't say I could sing. Um, but uh, I will sing. And I was thinking about this song earlier. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word and just to rest upon his promise just to know Thus saith the Lord, and Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. And oh, for grace to trust him more. Amen. All right, let's get into the word of God. I want to be mindful of your time, um, but um, I'm just thankful for that. Thank you, Josh. Pray for me. Y'all know I ain't nobody singer, but I will worship. I will worship the Lord. John chapter four. I want you to go to John chapter four. Because um, I actually, Minister Priscilla, one of our associate ministers here, uh, we were having some discussion the other day and kind of provoked me with this verse. And I had uh, shared some teaching on this uh, while traveling some time ago. 
and uh, went and kind of re revisited and, and recrafted. I want to go to John 4, and tonight I want to talk about the geography of my worship. The geography of my worship. The, the geography of my worship. John chapter 4. Um, please go there tonight. Um, and I want to I wanna read uh, between verses 19 and 24. Uh, and then I want to offer um, some thought. I want to offer to us some thoughts surrounding this text. And uh, that kind of hopefully helps shape how we perceive this time uh, that the church is in how we perceived uh, tremendous, tremendous decisions. Let me tell you something. Let me just say this. Please pray for the pastors. Please. It is very easy to criticize. But let me tell you something. Very commonly, we will criticize what we don't understand. And uh, on this side of the table, uh, there are a myriad. If there are seven things that you consider when you make decisions for pastors, it's probably 37 things. And oftentimes those are things that fly under the radar. And in this time, we have all been, been intensely prayerful, trying to be informed on, on how to make these decisions. Let me say that this is in my text, but uh, Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy uh, that God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of, come on church, power, what else? Love, and you know it, and of a sound mind. And sometimes, you know, we, we overlook that sound mind part. That means a mind that uh, is prone to wisdom, uh, a mind that is uh, able to process discernment uh, and, and make these types of decisions. And so pray for pastors and leaders, community leaders, uh, that we would operate with power, with love, and with a sound mind. And uh, one thing I know is is that um, God, by his spirit, we know. We know. John 14, 26, when he, the spirit of truth, come, the comforter comes, which is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you all things. We're not, we ain't no fools. <laughs> As, as Bishop Noel Jones would say, just because I speak in tongues, it don't make me no dummy. Please don't, don't, don't be crazy, right? Uh, his spirit gives us a sound mind. And that's what we're using. We're using the power with considering things of love and, and a sound mind. And so a birth out of that, I want to talk about the geography of my worship tonight because um, uh, there's, there's much to be said about this. Listen to the text. King James, John 4, 19 through 24. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Verse 20, she says, Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, <laughs> the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Uh-oh, Jesus talking. He talking crazy. It appears that way. He says, believe me, verse 21 again, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship you know not. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for. Salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is. <laughs> Pause. Say lie right there. The hour cometh <laughs> and, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Last verse, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the whole church said, amen. The geography of my worship. A big part of the tension 
uh, that has been existing in this hour, particularly as we are dealing with uh, the coronavirus and the limitations, watch this, the, the virus and the physical limitations that are being set uh, has brought us really to the brink of where we have to uh, consider our theology. Now, I thought about this earlier as I was prayerful and, and, and preparing how, uh, how, and how, how the time work that I had recently here at our church been uh, preaching and teaching a series called I Know How to Eat. Uh, and in that series, I have been dealing with this notion where individuals are very commonly leaving churches. And this is the church at large saying I wasn't getting fed. Uh, and listen, I am not diminishing that. I believe that that is probably true for many. But I also would argue that for many people, that is not necessarily true. This idea of I'm not being fed because just as important as it is for a preacher, a teacher to feed you, it is also imperative that you know how to eat. And so this is a matter of palate and a matter of appetite. And many of, many of us struggle with uh, how we like to eat the bread of life, the word of God. Um, oftentimes, like we do, it's, 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 a, it's a junk food diet. We, we have these preferences. Pastor Jackson, love you. But true people who know how to eat they want it all. They want to be able to consume all of the word of God, the parts that are easy to swallow, just like in the natural, things that are sweet, sweet, easy to, to swallow. Then there are things that are good for you that are challenging to swallow, swallow, excuse me. And so I had been preaching uh, this and Paul uh, writes and says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine. I had, we got stuck on that for two weeks. It is profitable for doctrine. Now I know in 2020, don't nobody like the word doctrine, but we have to have sound and solid doctrine. By that, I mean, uh, our bishop always references, he, he could teach this much more eloquently than me, but uh, he always references Luke one and one. There are some things that are most surely believed among us and you have to anchor down on some things. And I believe that what we have, what we've seen, what we've been seeing here recently is uh, for many a theological crisis. And uh, you, the, the tension that has existed in the last week in the church has been so mind blowing that if you close your doors, then you are seen as faithless and the government has intimidated you and punked you. If you keep your doors open, you are irresponsible for putting the people that, that you are overseer of, how would you put them in harm's way by opening your doors? And, and many, many of us, we, we've been talking and texting uh, all week long about the tension that exists between what does faith look like? Is it faith? Watch this. Is it faith if I hug you? Right. And say, I believe God is not going to let me get sick. So by faith, I'm going to still hug you. Or is it faith if I fist bump you and say faith without works is dead. And so I'm going to put some works with my faith. Now, when, when that tension exists, what what is your position? How, how do you how do you explain? How do you anchor down if somebody asks you, if a non-believer asks you, uh, the reasoning behind some of these things is faith one or the other. You know, am I am I obeying the word of God? Right. When I when I submit to the governing authorities and if they say don't have more than this number, I, I don't have more than that number. Or or am I am I walking in faith and obeying the word, knowing that the blood is on the doorpost and no calamity is going to come and it's going to pass over? So when there seems to be this, this growing tension there that both appear to have the support of the word of God, what you going to pick? What, what will be your anchor? What will hold you? And that's what I have been spending time. I told my church, I said, let me be clear. I have an agenda. When you come here every Sunday, I am trying to indoctrinate you with the word of God. I am trying to get it down in your toes so that everything you do in your life is filtered through the word of God. So what is, 
Having said that, what is our position on worship? Hold on. What is our position on the geographical <laughs> implications of our worship? Right? What 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 is that? What is that? If 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 I am told if it is responsible for me to not open my doors, if it is if if I am asked by my mayor or my governor or my president whether you like those individuals or voted for them or not, if we are asked, if our if if there are members in our churches that are saying I feel at risk here if you open and then there are others saying, we walking by faith. What are you going to do? This is why it is imperative that you have a healthy, sound, anchored doctrine and theology and understanding of the word of God. Because oftentimes, a lot of these things are, are not theologically sound and we are doing what we feel like. We are actually doing some things out of fear. We're saying that we are staying open because we will not fear. When in fact, sometimes you stayed open because you were scared. Right? So what, what am I saying? Let me jaywalk into the text. I'm not going to say you know it because I don't assume everybody knows the word of God. Jesus has found himself intentionally going through a place called Samaria. The Samaritans uh, under king under the king of Assyria, uh, after he took the ten northern tribes into captivity, he brought people from Ava, from Kutha, Hamath, uh, and Sepharvaim, and uh, there was an intermingling and an intermarriage with the Israelites. So the Samaritans, as a result, this breed, if you would, quote unquote, uh, is are considered half Jews and uh, not fully respected or embraced by of those who call themselves full-blooded Jews. So they would avoid these individuals, particularly the city. Jesus intentionally goes through, I believe, in foreknowledge, knowing that he had a rendezvous with uh, who we call the woman at the well. She's, she's not named. That is what we know her as. Uh, they have an exchange, and she seems a little spicy until Jesus makes it very clear that he not to be played with. <laughs> he says to her, uh, where's your husband? Uh, and this deep personal question uh, and explanation as he goes deeper and says, uh, the one you're with isn't yours. You've had several others. And she has this major aha moment. And this is where we pick up in the text where in verse 19, she says unto him, I perceive you must be a prophet. That's the first verse I read for you tonight. I perceive that you are a prophet. Uh, now, we're talking about the geography of worship uh, because um, we're trying to figure out uh, if, if, I, if I'm not in a, in a place, in a building, does, does my worship count? How, how does this look? How do we, as a, as a body of Christ, as a church, how do we rationalize these types of decisions that we believe are best to be made? that fight and that have attention against what we believe God has called us to do, i.e. assemble ourselves. By verse 20, she says, our fathers worshiped in this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So immediately we have this, uh, hey, Kennedy, hey, Kobe, love them. Immediately we have an issue here, right? She identifies that you guys said, Jesus, your people have said that, that, that worshiping your God has to happen in a certain place. The, the implication here is that if, if it's not there, then, then it doesn't count. Now, let me just qualify what I'm saying here. Let me just be really clear. I believe one of the greatest wonders on this earth is the church experience. More than that, I believe one of the greatest experiences on earth is the black church experience. All right. it, is, it is just like no other. We've been laughed at, made fun of, called uh, too animated, 
antics, but when you begin to uh, understand the the history and the context of the sounds we make and the way we dance and the way we finish a sermon, it, it'll change, it'll blow your mind. I'm saying all that, and, and let me just be clear. I, I, I am, I can't wait till we get through this season and not be around here wondering, right? But I, I also thought it was imperative to come on here tonight and say, my worship don't have no limits. Oh, God. Oh, I wish I was in church. I need to hear somebody holler amen right there. No, the, 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 the way that God exists and the way that I have been created, there is not a one, not a two, not a nobody that can limit or prohibit the worship in which I give unto God. Come on, somebody. Help me here. There, there is, there's nothing. There's nothing. She said, no, y'all said it's supposed to be in Jerusalem. Y'all said it's supposed to be there. You, you, you have suggested that it is only supposed to count when it's in the place. Jesus said, Jerusalem is a beautiful place. And, and if you can get there, get there. But let me tell you something. In my kitchen. Oh, Sha. Lomo Saya. In my car, sitting on a computer. Come on, y'all. You believe that a system can prevent the worship of your God? If I had an organ that put me in C sharp, I would tell you that around about midnight, Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas were in the inner jail, locked with their hands and locked in their feet. Oh, but they forgot to cover their mouth. And right there in the inner jail, they began to sing and praise God at midnight. And they turned the jail into a sanctuary, saints. Let me tell you about the geography of my worship. Baby, every time I could come to church, I'm going to be up in here. I'm going to be in here glorifying. But if I can't get here, oh, oh God, I thank you. If I can't get here right where I am, if it got to happen in my living room, if it got to happen at my friend's house, I will Bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually, whether I can have 10 people in my church or 50 or 100, or they tell me don't come out your house, it will not stop because the geography of my worship is not limited to Jerusalem or 1524 Simpson Street or this church or that church. So stop being upset. The devil can't stop you from praising and worshiping your God. Let's move past this. You said get to Jerusalem, but a time is coming. Oh God. I done jumped to verse 21. Are y'all in here with me? He says, woman, believe me, an hour is coming. How? As a matter of fact, it now is. Well, they will not have to go to Jerusalem to give God glory. You won't have to get to a church building. Go to church every time you can. Let me tell you, when this thing get lifted, I'm preaching. I already got my text. I was glad when they said unto me, <laughs> let us go into the house of the Lord. But until that happens, I'm the house of the Lord. Know ye not. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to see somebody put on here, devil can't stop my praise. Y'all on here talking about that they trying to block it. They can't stop me from praising God. I'm the temple. Wherever I am. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Wherever I lift my voice. Oh, atmosphere shifter. You're a room changer, a temperature regulator. Wherever you are, if you got to do it in your cubicle, ain't no government Ain't no corona. You got to know that the geography of your worship is not limited to the space where you call the building. Get to the building if you can. I love it. I'm in here all by myself. I can't stay away. But if I, if, if tomorrow, if I couldn't get in here, 
How? I will dance in my living room and say, God, I give you glory. I feel your presence. I feel you in the room. I, I feel you moving. There is no limit. There is no government shutdown on praise. Ha! Can I run? Lord, I'm acting. They're going to think I'm crazy. I'm sorry. There is no shutdown. Heaven is open. <laughs> And it'll meet you wherever you are. Ain't no government stopping this. Ain't no virus stopping this. If they send the National Guard, I'll dance in front of the machine guns. Because the hour cometh and now is when you will not worship in the mountain nor at Jerusalem. Come on, church. And come on right now. I dare you just try it where you at. Come on. Just say, thank you, Jesus. I know your kids going to look at you crazy. Come on. Just say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you made me the temple of the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord, that where I am, worship can happen. I thank you, Lord, that the government, the store, the mall might be closed, but heaven is open. I thank you, Jesus, that even if they tell me I can't get in there, I'm going to do it right where I am. Lord, I thank you that my worship is not limited by my geographical position. But with my mouth, I'll make a temple. How? Rana Moshe. Hoyana. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I will bless the Lord. I will praise him at all times. I don't got to go to Jerusalem. I don't have to make it to the mountains. If I can get there, I'm going, but I don't have to make it. God, <sighs> know who I worship. Verse 22. Woman, you don't know what you were. You don't know nothing about this. If you knew what I knew, you would know you ain't got to get to Jerusalem. If you knew what I knew, you would know that God will tabernacle with you right where you are. The streets are closed, but heaven is open. The restaurants are closed, but God's ears are open. He says, build me an altar right there. You and your kids, you and your husband, your kids in the living room. Right by, you single, live by yourself. I'll meet you in the living room. There's a geography of my worship. And that geography says I can do it wherever. You know not who you worship. We know who we worship. I know, I know who I worship. I know that when I call on them, oh God, y'all ain't talking to me. We went into a worship a few weeks ago at church and uh, we were singing, call the name of Jesus. And I, I reminded the church, I said, let me tell you, Jesus is not just his name, but Jesus, oh God, but Jesus is a prayer. <laughs> it's a one word prayer. And wherever you are, you got to be reminded that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. And when you call on Jesus, no matter where you are, how? Shout out my said. Come on, call them in the comments. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You're going to feel them. Somebody got goosebumps on their arms. You ain't even in a church building. Somebody feels the presence of God right now. You ain't even in a building. Somebody got tears running down their eyes right now. You ain't even in a building. The name Jesus itself will turn your living room to a tabernacle. Shut it down if you have to. But you can't shut my mouth and you can't shut the dispensation of his glory because it'll hit me wherever I need it to hit it. My worship has geography, and that geography is wherever I open my mouth. 
What? First Corinthians 6, 19. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. Luke 17, 21. Neither shall they say, lo, here, O lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is inside of you. The kingdom of God is inside. I love my building, Big Red Church. But baby, if I can't get here, the kingdom of God is inside of me. And I have made up in my mind that if I'm laying in a hospital, if I'm traveling, or if Corona shuts down the streets, my worship will not go hindered. Lord, I thank you. Come on, y'all. I can't hear, but lift up your voice right where you are. Try it. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. Try it. I dare you. Try it right here. Your geography of your worship means it can happen wherever, whenever, right where you're at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Timothy 2 and 8. I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Ow! Lifting up holy hands without wrath and no doubt. I would that men would pray everywhere. <laughs> I would that men would pray everywhere. Let them shut it down. Ha! Y'all don't want to hear that. That's too radical for that. Let them shut it down. We will not be silenced. Hallelujah. I feel God. Y'all pray for me. I feel the presence of the living God in here. The geography of my worship. For from the rising of the sun, I'm just padding it a little bit. Malachi 1.11. Even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles and in every place. Incense shall be offered unto my name. Ha! Do it anywhere. Do it wherever. You the, you the game changer. Your presence is what changes things. Your presence is what does it. So when we can get here, come on, but if we can't, y'all, my worship is not limited to Jerusalem or the mountain. Wherever I am, you don't know what you worship. But the hour will come and now is. I'm in verse 23. Keep up. But the hour. <laughs> oh, God. But the hour coming. And now is. Is this in your Bible? I'm in verse 23. I don't leave the text behind. Discipline preacher. Know where I'm at at all times and keeping time. Holy Ghost, give me that kind of order. He ain't random. We just gonna see what happens. No, you ain't. You gonna pray and you gonna prepare. And then the Holy Ghost gonna fall on that. We ain't just seeing what happened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the hour come. And now we is. Y'all, we in an hour. What we going to do? Huh? What you going to do? What we going to do? The hour come and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Lord, the Father in spirit. <laughs> Jesus. shall worship the father in spirit. Let me let me let me clarify this. Our worship only matters in a building if it is in spirit and in truth. Oh, I'm gonna drop something on you. You could be in a building and it not be in spirit and not be in truth and it don't count. You can be outside the building and it be in spirit and in truth, and it will. 
A lot of people do it in church and it don't count because it's not in spirit and the truth. And there's some folk do it on a couch in spirit and truth. And it counts more than those who went to church. Listen, don't don't chop this video up and say I said church don't matter. That's a lie. I'm in here. And every time I can, I am suggesting to you that in the face of limits. It don't stop. Ha! In the face of limits, I have to, I think the Lord, there are a lot of things I think he's teaching us right now. Let me say this. I'm going to give you a couple of thoughts, then I'll pray. I think the Lord wants us to be reminded of these three things. Write this down. First one is that my life is the location. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, let me see you say that. My life <laughs> is the location of worship. <laughs> now, <clears throat> you, the, you the temple. <clears throat> Come on. Know ye not? In these last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Joel, as quoted in Acts on the day of Pentecost. In the last day, I'm going to pour out my spirit. And wherever you get it popping, <laughs> wherever you decide going to be a sanctuary, that's where it's going to happen. Not in the mountain, not, not, not in Jerusalem, but your life. You get to your church, wherever you go. First church, y'all get in here every time we can. But with limits, don't let it stop. Because your life, the only reason this building really matter is because we come in here. <laughs> every year I go to several events and hotels. In that ballroom, they probably had a wedding last week. Probably was a party the week before that. Probably was a convention the week before that. But when the people of God show up in that same ballroom, it becomes a sanctuary. Ha! Yeah. It becomes a sanctuary, y'all. And if in this season your living room got to be one, your bedroom... Who, gonna, who can stop that? How can they legislate against, who can legislate against that? When it's you. None, bro, Conrad. None. No limit. The geography of my worship is not limited. It don't have no limits. Wherever I open my mouth and bless him. <laughs> if it be that he inhabits praise. You do it wherever. Now. Every time I come in here, I'm coming. But baby, if I can't, <laughs> I will. Bless him. Right where I am. My life is the location. Here's number two. You can't properly worship what you don't know. Now, let me say that better. You can't properly worship who you don't know. That's number two. You can't properly worship who you don't know. See, when, when you, when, 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 what, what I mean by that? God is a spirit. <laughs> when, when you, if you, if you grasp that, right? Number one, my life is a location. Number two, you can't properly worship who you don't know. God is a spirit. How are we going to limit the spirit? Oh, I got the one. How you go? How you go? Stop! How you gonna stop? God, He is spirit. <laughs> who about to? Who about to? Who about to shut down a limitless? Huh? I'm in twenty four. My last verse. God is a spirit, y'all, and you have an unlimited, unhindered. Opportunity under any circumstance to make sure that he gets it. 
that he, that you are a living sacrifice. You keep giving it. A dead sacrifice, you can only offer it once. One time, dead, gone. Living sacrifice. Oh, we get it popping every day. You cannot properly worship who you don't know. God is a spirit, y'all. Ain't no limit. They're trying to stop the church. Who? <laughs> Who about to stop God the spirit? <laughs> Who? When I can get them anywhere. You can't properly worship. This is what he checked in verse 22. I got a little ahead of myself, right? We know who we worship. Come on, lay your hands on yourself. Say, I know who I worship. I know. I know who I worship. And can't nobody, the coronavirus, what? <laughs> He's a spirit. Say that. Say amen to that. Say amen again. Say amen again. Now, my life is a location. You can't properly worship who you don't know. And uh, I want to say this last one. Be found in the spirit. Whew. Number three, be found in the spirit. Be found in the in the spirit be found in the spirit y'all got me hype I got a little scramble but it's all in the text he's seeking such to worship him if he finds you in a church it's because you were in the spirit in the church but he can find you in the spirit, wherever you're at. That's, you worship him in spirit. You worship him in truth. He'll find you. He ain't looking for you necessarily at your, your the church you hold membership. He might. But he only do that through the spirit. We, I think the Lord is reminding us that this is spiritual business. Our life is a location. You can worship who you, properly who you don't know. And when, when he come looking, Seek it. Be in the spirit. You ain't, and that can be anywhere. <laughs> that can be anywhere, y'all. My life is a location. You can't properly worship who you don't know. If you can't get to a building, let them find you in the spirit. Be in the spirit. That's what's going to count at the end of the day. Don't be in the building, but you ain't in the spirit. Because you're wasting your time. Be in the spirit while you're in the building. Or at home. Or at your job. Or in your car. And, uh, and we're going to win. Lord, thank you. Thank you that long before COVID-19 ever existed popped up or was made, whichever one, <laughs> you have so designed all of this in a way that would transcend the limits that those things would try to place upon us. This is spiritual business. And maybe part of this is to remind us that. Maybe this is, maybe this is what this is about is reminding us of the value that you made us, that you would make us the temple. Thank you, Lord. That wherever we go, not in the mountain, not in Jerusalem, the, the hour cometh and it now is where we got to we gotta figure it out. <laughs> but thank you. And Lord, as much criticism and tension going on in the kingdom, and let us be reminded that you cannot be stopped. And even if a limit is put on church attendance, that doesn't stop you. That doesn't stop you. If we got to go back to the book of Acts and meet in homes and group, whatever it takes, Lord, you can do this a million different ways. 
It is our hope that this thing will pass soon and we can return back to our normal course. But let us not ignore what you're saying in this moment. Let us not overlook it. <clears throat> in Jesus' name. Pray for everyone who's been on here that they've been impacted, that they are reminded that their life is a location. Wherever they get it popping is where it's going to pop. That we can't properly worship who we don't know. Let us get closer to you. We love when you whisper, God, because to hear you whisper means we got to be close. You don't yell, because if you yell, people don't have to be close. You, you're not in an earthquake. You're not in a raging wind. You're in a quiet whisper. Because to hear you, to hear a whisper, we got to be close. So let us understand that we can't properly worship who we don't know. And Lord, let us be found in the spirit. You're seeking, not in buildings, not necessarily. But you're seeking us in spirit. We win in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Hey, Dr. Green. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Amen. Praise and worship leader, pastor, usher, greeter, everything. I pray you've been blessed tonight. Did this help anybody? Let me hear you say yeah. High five yourself and say yeah while you're typing it. Y'all know I'm participatory. Amen. <laughs> Thankful for that. Listen, I want to kind of make some transition. I still feel God on me, but I got to go because I am always trying my best um, to be mindful of you. Uh, we come to church for two reasons. This is church. Inspiration. Uh, come on, Sister Tanisha, that great name. I can hear you singing it. Myrn, I hear you singing it, Myrn. And uh, we certainly thank God for his goodness tonight. Um, so, We've had some inspiration. Like I said, I still feel God was a powerful time in sharing. I hope you were blessed by it. I hope you've shared this and told First Church, be on the line. We're, we're so thankful to see uh, at one point nearly 160 people on. Uh, that's phenomenal. I want to make sure that, that everybody is getting the same information on the same page. So here's a couple of things I, I had uh, originally planned. That's why I want to set some context and teaching tonight, too. Um, I had originally planned for us to have our one hour service in, in person uh, on uh, Tuesday night. Uh, Governor Pritzker um, has mandated uh, no more than 50 people to gather. Uh, I have also had a phone conversation with our wonderful, wonderful mayor, uh, I think Monday or Tuesday. Uh, and so it is uh, absolutely K to the. Uh, absolutely, my intention uh, have been under much counsel, uh, much prayer, uh, that we are to, for the next two Sundays, the 22nd and the 29th, again, this thing is very fluid and changing very fast, going to be moving to online church uh, as well. Say amen to that. Say amen to that. Um, and this is of uh, of. Uh, Great prayer and consideration. Um, matter of fact, last Sunday we had really, really strong attendance uh, for things that were going on. But um, I have done several things. Um, one is I put together like a, a Corona team task force uh, of end of different leaders from different parts of our church that kind of uh, play a part in service. And so uh, we met today via video conference. Thank you all for the amens. I, I appreciate that. Uh, as I said earlier, pastors are trying to get it right. Uh, and uh, I think that it is imperative uh, that we, uh, not just that, because there's actually some some ambiguity about if they can actually tell churches this. That's a, that's a whole other story. Some some uh, states, the governors are exempting churches and asking the churches to kind of do their own thing. And and I believe that ultimately we probably could have that flexibility as well. But I want to, uh, you know, the big thing is for me is uh, the saints staying, um, the saints staying, 
Yes, baby. Uh, shout out to First Lady, keeping me abreast. Um, <clears throat> the saints staying safe, given the nature of this. That is the preeminent thing for me. This isn't about uh, being strong arm because th there's really none of that. But um, I love my church and um, I do not like uh, losing anybody or, or seeing that. So uh, we are being super, super, super prayerful and uh, responsible in that regard. So this Sunday, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be dope. We having like praise and worship. So we're having, so we can have no more than 50. So we're going to have like essential personnel. We all saying these same words. It's so dope. Um, essential personnel. So we will have people here in the building because I need help. We'll need help. Um, but so we'll have some music to open and I'll speak and it's going to be a great time. Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on Facebook Live, First Church of God Christian Life Center. Uh, it's going to be so good. So, <laughs> I better not say that for y'all. So I hate it. It's going to be good. So 22nd, 29th. Now, this thing is very fluid. Stuff is changing real fast. So uh, I'm not exactly sure, but um, we have a lot of people in our church who are in the medical field. Shout out to them, praying for them. They're so wise and Many of them have been, been helpful in this regard. Um, and Evanston has a few cases. Most of them, I believe, have been students at Northwestern, but it's just, it's just a lot. And, um, and I am especially cautious about my, our legacy ministry. That's what we call all our members 62 and over. We don't play about mamas and fathers of Zion. And uh, it is uh, said, uh, it is a fact that it, is, it has been more detrimental and rough on them and I know if I had church, they coming because they love Jesus and they love their pastor. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover them. Our, our deacons are, are deployed and we are, we are calling, taking care. So I got a couple other things we want to do. So that's what I want to make sure I said first is that we are moving to online. We had, church is not canceled. Don't say that. All right. Church is not canceled. This is our virtual sanctuary. Amen. And uh, and so it is our hope that this lifts soon, but it's really day by day, minute by minute. So um, we're asking uh, that everybody prepare to do this again in grander fashion Sunday at 10 a.m. OK, now here's some talking points. I have five and you may want to write these down. And um, what about and uh, Sister Angie, love both of y'all. Uh, here are talking points I want to do. There are five R's. Get this, and then I'll take some questions. There are five R's um, that I'm shaping this on, and we're going to send this out to the church um, formally. Uh, respectful, reasonable, have regard, responsible, and reverent. Okay? Somebody put that on the screen. I think uh, our team is uh, leading our church page. Uh, respectful reasonable, regard, responsible, and reverent. Okay. The first one is respectful. Again, uh, our, uh, the mandate that has been given is no more than 50 people. It's our intention. It's my intention to honor that as long as we ain't asked to do nothing that break the word of God. Now I pull an Acts 4 and 12, I think it is. Or you're like, who you think we should listen to you or God? But I, I don't have to do that. Okay. So, uh, for, for that reason, I love my mayor uh, he has a great relationship and I'm not trying to give him no extra stress. <laughs> so, and I love the people that I lead. I respect all of y'all and your safety and your families. So, uh, number one, we're respectful. Number two, I'm asking you to be reasonable. Now I want to really push this. Our task force was like, pastor, you got to push this. You got to push this. I'm like, yes, sir. I, I, yes, ma'am. You know, tell the whole team, we got to be reasonable to our elders. Please, please stay in. Please. I know you love Jesus and me and the church and outside, but we need you all. We need you. Love you, Sister Trish. We need y'all for another several 25, 30 years. So we are told that, that, that our seniors uh, and those with chronic medical conditions, heart disease, lung disease, COPD, diabetes, stuff like that. And I want to add our children. And I want to add everybody else. All right. Please be reasonable. You know, like you don't have to prove super spirituality to anybody. We are all children of God. You don't have to. You don't have to prove that. We want you well. 
So we'll be respectful. I'm asking you to be reasonable. Um, we are calling our seniors, but also call the church. I want y'all to get this. 847-866-7050. We have normal uh, business hours. I love church meeting online. It's a church meeting. Call the church. Send an email, fcogclc at fcogevanston.org, right? fcogclc at fcogevanston.org, 847-866-7050. Or we got emergency line when the office closed, 224-714-9312. 224-714-9312. If the office is closed and you need something, call the emergency line, 224-714-9312. 9312 is emergency number. If the office is open, just call the office during normal office hours, 847-866-7050. Or from your iPhone or Droid, <laughs> send an email, fcogclc at fcogevans.org. If our seniors can't get out, we will bring you food. We will bring you water. We go pick your medicine up, whatever. We we, we here to, to, uh, to make sure we, we uh, help you all. Also working... Um, uh, with our outreach ministry, we are looking to to do some service. I'll be communicating uh, to do that. I'm coming right up to that, Sister Delisa. Um, thank you for that for that too. That's one of our R's. Number three. Uh, so respectful, reasonable regard. Have regard for your neighbor. Call them, check on them, and if you happen to encounter them, give them space. Discern. You know. I know I'm a hugger. The instinct is just to do it, but please, but also call and check on people. I love you, Sister Connie. You know I love your green messages. <laughs> call and check on them. Have regard. And if you happen to be in somebody's space, have some regard. Kind of, you know, do that. Number four, be responsible. Keep giving. Keep giving. Keep giving. That is, I'm going to be honest, that's one of the biggest fears of, of a lot of pastors is how is our giving going to be affected if we can't gather here? I don't have no worries. Number one, because I know Jesus. Ha! The Lord done kept this church for 110 years. Coronavirus is not going to take it out. But he's not just going to do that to us. He's going to do it through us. So there are four ways to give. Now, uh, if you're not on our email list, I want you to call the church in the morning and get on it because that's one of the major ways that I'm communicating. You can go on our website to give. Thank you, Sister Tanisha. She's texting to give her Word Wednesday offering. That's why I'm, I'm raising offering right now. Tonight, we want to raise our offering for our service. And there are four ways that you can do that. All right? You can go to our website, fcogevanston.org. fcogevanston.org. Please be responsible and keep giving. You can text to give by texting FCOGCLC, the acronym for our church. To 73256. Somebody help me put that on there. Text 73256 uh, to text FCOGCLC to 73256, FCOGEverson.org. We also have, you can mail it. We're going old school, 1524 Simpson Street, or you can drop it off in our office. Say amen to that. And uh, our office hours are Tuesday through Thursday, 9 to 5, Friday, 9 to 2. Sunday, the office will be open 8 till 1. There, there will be people here 8 till 1. And um, if you want to come by and drop it off, please, you're more than welcome to do that anytime during the week. I'm going to add a fifth one. We'll come get it. Say amen. Amen. I'm hoping I'm not putting my foot in my mouth in it. But certainly for our elders who we are encouraging not to come out, they can't get to the mailbox, whatever. Uh, but those are really the, the four premier ways uh, that we have. Website, fcogeverson.org. You can give an offering tonight. You pay your tithes whenever. Don't wait till Sunday. Don't wait till Sunday. Text to give, fcogclc to 73256. Drop it off. Uh, office Sunday, 8 till 1. Tuesday through Thursday, 9 to 5. Friday, 9 to 2. Or you can mail it, 1524 Simpson Street, Evanston, Illinois, 60201. And last one. I want you so we're going to be respectful, reasonable, have regard, be responsible, and lastly, be reverent. Stay patient. I'm going to tell y'all, I'm not rushing to any decisions. That's why I need you praying for me. Thank you. Oh, Ollie said the U.S. mail still works. Eek! <laughs> 
Um, stay reverent. Stay patient. Stay purposeful. If you don't got to move around, don't move around haphazardly for nothing. Have a purpose. Can't just be out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will come pick it up. Um, thank you, Balcoms. We appreciate you for that. We appreciate you. We have others who, uh, who will come pick it up. Call our office. We will come. We will make it happen. Uh, but be reverent. Stay patient. Stay purposeful. And stay prayerful. Pray for this world. Pray for your families. Pray for your pastor and his family. My kids have, have, have not come out of the house since Sunday. Cabin fever major. To hear kids say, oh, I would love to go to school. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. We're going to take care of our children, take care of our families, take care of our elderly, uh, take care of those who already have conditions. But stay patient. No panic. Right? Stay purposeful. Don't just be moving around haphazard. If you don't need to go, don't go. But stay prayerful. The Lord is going to get, we will get through this. We will get through this. So those are my talking points. I'm going to share that formally, respectful, reasonable regard, responsible, and we stay reverent. Working with uh, our outreach director, Minister Waldron, on uh, collecting some things. We want to help. I, I saw our alderman put out a plea today, and, um, and uh, we want to take care of our legacy ministry, so we will be seeing about them. And if you are in any distress, call this church. If you need food, I know the kids at home. And anything this church can do, uh, we have consented uh, to be able to do that and, and share in this time. OK, so we've had our lesson. Right. My life is a location. You can't properly worship who you don't know and be found in the spirit. Uh, we have our five R's: respectful, reasonable, regard, responsible and be reverent. Now, let's end with questions. Anybody got any questions for Pastor Dillard? Um, it is my intention to answer anything you have tonight. Um, I will be also, let me make sure I say this. I will be doing but word Wednesday every Wednesday for the next couple of weeks as well. So, uh, I want to make sure I say that we will still have both our services that neither one is canceled. Don't use the word cancel. Don't tell nobody church cancel. It is not. It is online and it is, uh, our, this is our virtual sanctuary. Love you, mother. Hi. Oh, I miss her. I haven't seen her in. Oh, God, almost 20 years, but I just, Mother Hyde, I still love you. So good to see you. Tell everybody, I used to work with her. She used to keep me in line in my early days at the bank. And uh, still love her so much. All right, any questions? Cleaning. Yes, thank you, Deacon Michelle. We are doing another deep cleaning at the church this Saturday at 2 o'clock. Now, it's not our intention to have, like, a whole bunch of people here because we're trying to avoid crowds. But if you would like to come help, we will be here Saturday at 2 it was a big group of us last week. We knocked it out in about 70 minutes. Um, love you, Sister Rose. And uh, so we in, we will do that again this week. Love you, Minister Minnie Pierce. I'm so grateful to have you on here. And I can't wait till I see you again real soon. And hugging is legal again. And uh, yes, Mother High, I love you so much. Um, so 2 o'clock on this Saturday. We coming in, we wipe down everything, pews, pulpit, chairs. Man, this, uh, the, um, the Saints did a phenomenal job last week, so be here uh, uh, Saturday. Be picking up supplies tomorrow. Thank you so much, Brother Dwayne. Uh, love Brother Dwayne. He keep all this in check, all this intact. And um, uh, being of our property, uh, man, he, keep a, he, he make the pastor and the church look real good. So, yes, Sha, I, um, uh, 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 we are going to, it will not be the full size, uh, but the praise and worship, it, it'll be kind of condensed. Again, we're trying to keep the number of people down here, but uh, we will have, we will open up a praise and worship, uh, and it won't be me, as I was singing tonight. <laughs> we're going to get the professionals. Uh, so, yes, we will have praise and worship. We're going to try and uh, do it. I'm expecting it to be about an hour again. But we, we want to have elements of our, of our normal uh, service, and we're looking forward to do that. Sister Rena, we love you. She works uh, and uh, has to miss so much. I'm so glad you'll be able to join us. Uh, one of the things we're working on with um, our task force is uh, making, and we still got a lot to flush out, and, and I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but making 
the live video available for people to go back and rewatch. We want to make sure our seniors who are not on Facebook are able to get it. We'll be sending audio out and making CDs, all of these things. We are really looking forward to do that. Do you know of any legacy members that are in need we could provide on Saturday? Not currently, but as soon as I have an update from our deacons, uh, we are going to make sure that we are responding as quickly as possible. Um, they, uh, we are working on flushing that out. And if we have any, we'll let you know. Uh, that's our outreach director, Minister Waldron. If anyone has toiletries or cleaning supplies to share, please contact the office to drop it off during hours. Again, service is a big part of what we want to do at this time. And don't assume because, you know, uh, many of us are okay and have things that everybody does. So, uh, we definitely want to do that. Uh, Sha, okay, we'll, we're going to talk with your leader and... <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see about him, uh, see see if he can make that decision. Uh, again, thank you, Minister Walter. If you have a need, call the office. If it is after, call the emergency line, 224-714-9312. That's the emergency. If it's office hours, don't call the emergency line. Call the church. Somebody's here. But anytime after that, please call the emergency number, 224-714-9312. Any more questions, concerns, thoughts? Again, we are online only for the next two Sundays. And, um, and so Sunday at 10 a.m., we'll be right back here. We'll be in the sanctuary. We're going to have like, we're going to have service. You're going to watch it. And uh, it's going to be great. I'll be back here doing this again next Wednesday. Uh, but if you have a need, call the church. Email us, fcogclc at fcogevinson.org. Or uh, after hours, uh, call the emergency line, 224-714-9312. Thank you, First Lady, for that number. Okay, anybody else? Um, hey, Sister Nick, bless you. Call me. I want to come put some oil on the door. <laughs> I would love to. Bless you all. So thankful to God for what he's doing. All right, listen. Stay patient. Stay purposeful. Don't just be around here. Don't just be out. Okay, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I'm going home right now. I'm going to sit still. I'm just going between the church and home. And please stay prayerful. And uh, God's going to get us through this. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. We never lose. We never lose. We Come on, that's how we're going to end the call. Type that. We never lose. No, put in Jesus, we never lose. That's what I want to see on our, I'm about to get a benediction. Make sure you've given, all right? Give your tithes, weekend, whatever, four ways. Uh, in Jesus, we never lose. Four ways to give. I sent, uh, you should have got that promo on your email. It's on our webs, uh, my Facebook page. I could be found at. Listen, if you're looking up the church, all you have to do is, is we have a username at FCOGCLC. If you're looking me up on Facebook at Pastor M. Dillard. And the same is for Instagram and Twitter, at Pastor M. Dillard, at FCLG, uh, CLC. In Jesus, we never lose. That's it. In Jesus, we never lose. In Jesus. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Thank you all for your commitment. Thank you for your trust. It's a lot. I've been like, Lord, don't let me get this wrong. Please, don't let me get this wrong. And seeing your support and your love. And exactly. If people want to know what we're doing, give them our five R's. We're, we're being respectful. We're being reasonable. We're showing regard. We're being responsible by giving, and we're going to stay reverent. We're not going to get in the flesh. The Lord's got us. Lord, I thank you. I praise you for this time of service. This was not just a broadcast. This was church. Thank you that we assembled ourselves. We failed not to assemble ourselves. And uh, you have kept us. Thank you, Lord, that our life is a location of worship. And wherever we lift you is, is what becomes our sanctuary. And I thank you, Lord. Keep the people patient, purposeful, and prayerful. And I decree that the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, that the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you, that the Lord lift up his countenance unto you and give you his peace. Love you all. God bless you. The geography of my worship, it happens wherever I am. God keep you. I'll see you this weekend. God bless.